I have a lot in here and I know the beers are waiting, so I will try and go uh, a little bit quick. Um, thanks, as Joey said, I'm Andy. I am a marketing cloud consultant at Acquia. Um, I've actually been kind of involved in, in talking uh, with people and the members of the Modic community for quite a while as I started actually as a sales rep for Modic Inc. back in 2007. Um, it had gone through a, a handful of roles since then in partnerships, customer success, and now I work with um, our, a lot of our CDP customers and our biggest uh, Acquia campaign studio customers um, as a marketing cloud consultant. So today we're going to go through really the, what the journey is and how the different stages of automation can work with Modic, um, from your basic newsletters to really full, uh, full scale marketing automation. Um, and that doesn't just have to be marketing automation, we will talk a little bit about um, some business operations that you can automate with Modic as well. Uh, so we'll go through really the, the four stages from newsletters, uh, personalizing batch and blast emails that you may send, having some basic trigger emails uh, or trigger messages if you uh, like other channels, and then that full automation. Um, we'll skip through that. Um, so really when you're thinking about your marketing, most people start with what the message is that they want to get out and then it's the campaign. They think more from the business level, what is going to benefit them. And we really want to take that and you've got your offer, you have your campaign, you just send that to everybody. That's your, your basic newsletter or other message that you might send out. Uh, but we want to really move into talking to the person and get to customer first marketing rather than campaign first marketing. So we'll go through that as we uh, go here, uh, go through the presentation today. Um, this is a, actually a slide from our onboarding deck uh, for our campaign studio customers where we really recommend that new users of Modic or Campaign Studio start slow and then work their way. You don't want to try and build your own in a day or build your own in a day and do everything all at once. So we have the crawl stage, which is just getting started in your first maybe few weeks or could be a couple months, depending on what your capabilities and what your bandwidth are. Then you get into adding in a couple more channels getting more data from different sources, um, creating more of a preference center, which particularly in Europe, that's probably more of a call stage um, because that's much more of a legal requirement here. Um, mis uh, mixing in things like that in the content, the pop-up messages or focus items, and then the run stage that's getting really advanced and a lot more technical, where you're probably not going to just be able to do everything as a marketer, uh, but some of the new plugins, integrations um, that can really help you get to the run stage. So when you think about marketing and what story you're trying to tell, uh, one of the things that we learn uh, very early on in school is when you have a story, you've got the five W's. So we'll start with who, and that is your audience. Uh, it doesn't have to be your customers, it can be subscribers, it can be elite loyalty program members, it can be employees. Uh, you might want to send a message to a whole bunch of different people. So you need to identify who those people are. Then, what do you want to tell to those people? Um, that's just coming up with a message that you're going to send. Um, when do you want to send that message? That can be a newsletter that you send on a week, weekly basis or a monthly basis. It can be right after they make a purchase. It could be uh, 21 days after starting the last coffee. Um, so identifying when you want that message to get to that person. Where, in this case, is really the channel or the device that you want that message to go on. So it could be text message, a mobile device, a push notification, or it could be email, it could be on the website, um, using dynamic content uh, on the web. Um, it could be any number of different channels that you may use in your marketing. And then perhaps most importantly is the why. Think about why you really want to send this message to this person at that time. And there could be a, a variety of different reasons that you would send that message. So it could be educating an audience, increasing engagement, um, expanding the audience, any of these examples um, are just ideas for why you might want to send, whether it's a newsletter or some sort of automated message. So we'll start with basic newsletter. 
newsletters. I won't spend a whole lot of time on this. I think everybody is probably uh, very familiar with newsletters as 81% of marketers send newsletters. Um, I'm actually a little bit surprised that it's gone higher. So these are just a, a few screenshots of newsletters that I've received in the last month or so. Um, very basic, hardly any personalization at all, but I don't really expect much personalization from these newsletters. What you do want to think about is who your audience is. In most cases, it's just your double opt in contacts, um, and that's about all the segmentation you do. You do want to think about how frequently you're going to send your newsletter, and a big part of that is knowing how much content you have. Because if you don't have enough content, you don't want to send your newsletter too frequently and send the same content over and over. So then we get into more advanced uh, batch of blast emails. So these are campaigns and uh, a lot of uh, what Drop Solid uh, just talked about. Um, the personalization really does increase the engagement. So 98% of marketers have said that when they send personalized messages, they get much better engagement and much better results. This was a, a study that Acquia conducted. I don't actually remember when, but I think uh, within the last year. So when you're starting to think about that personalization, you want to think about what data you either have or want to collect about somebody. Um, so some of the data you might have, it's not just profile data that you would want to think about, it can be that engagement data. So as Mohammed talked about this morning, email deliverability, very important, and sending to your engaged contacts can really help increase that deliverability. We have fields like the, uh, the last active date that is already a default field in Monic. Um, you may want to add a last purchase date field or uh, last campaign, just knowing what you've recently sent somebody. Um, an engage field, it just as a holding in yes or no, you can use whatever metrics or whatever other information you have to identify if that person meets your definition of engaged. Um, and one of the things that I don't really talk about in the automation is the campaign steps that you have in Monic to update a contact. So one of the examples that our customers use is, is when somebody starts a campaign, they can have a field for the start date of that campaign, and then they know later on, say a year or two down the road, this person has been in this campaign before, and then if they want to recycle them through that campaign, they at least know like, if they change content, they're not sending the same thing twice. Um, other data more of the profile information, a couple of the next screenshots do have uh, examples of a ski mountain. So in that case, you would want to see, uh, you would want to know what somebody's home mountain is, where they'd like to go skiing, and where they might go uh, visit. So you use a select field for that. Personalization can be as basic as just having tokens in your email saying hello first name and that might even be something that you do in a newsletter. Um, but then getting a little bit more into presenting the data, like if you have a loyalty club number, you could present that in an email. Um, a closest store to information if you're sending to retail customers. Um, in this case, if somebody lives out west, you might want to send them an email, but um, invites them to ski for snowmats, which is in the Rocky Mountains, compared to ski Loom, which is on the East Coast. So if you're selling ski gear, knowing that somebody is more likely to go to Loom Mountain instead of snowmats, they're more likely to engage with that email and look past the header. They know that you are trying to market to them and you actually know that you care about them and what information you have. So this is really one email, just a simple block, that one header there is the only difference in the entire email, but that can make a huge impact on the success of that message. So when you get into your personalization, again, it's not just the data, it's the engagement and keeping that email deliverability, but also making sure that somebody is ready to engage with you. Um, it, it'll be a better experience for that person than your brand. So if I receive 100 emails over the course of a couple months from a company but I never open one of them, I just, I, I don't really want to interact with that company anymore. 
and I'm sure a lot of you have gotten way more emails than you're interested in receiving, um, and probably don't do much with those brands anymore. Uh, you may have at one point, but now you get so many emails that you've never opened, and you just don't care. So we do have that la uh, date last active field. I would recommend using uh, last six months, last year or so, um, because that field actually looks at any form submissions, any email opens, or any patients. So especially as email metrics are getting a little bit harder to rely on, you do have those other metrics with that day, day last active field to see if anybody has had any kind of engagement with your brand. Um, and then in this case, the, the contact type, I brought that as an example because uh, I saw an article just the other day about American Airlines um, canceling a whole bunch of flights because of staff shortages and weather. Um, and somebody, he and his wife, had gotten uh, the same email. Uh, actually, they, they were two different emails. One of them for the wife was acknowledging the flights had gotten delayed, they had all these problems. She is just a basic, basically newsletter subscriber. He is one of their elite platinum, like top tier loyalty members, and there was really no acknowledgement of anything to him and how the airline might be uh, trying to avoid that. So it was a, not a great experience for either one of them, particularly because neither one of them had any flights booked. So what did they really <laughs> care about all the delays? Um, and also, to anybody who did have any flights booked, if they were probably getting that message, but it probably makes them feel a little bit less special because it's just a message that goes out to everybody, not just acknowledging those people that are in pain. So we'll start now talking about some basic automation. These can be some uh, just pretty straightforward triggers. So we have uh, a couple screenshots here um, of, again, a few automated triggers that I've gotten in the last month or so. Um, in fact, I, I achieved one. I had it last night after checking into the hotel because they just signed me up for their loyalty program and they knew that as I checked in, I would be waiting for that email to arrive where I would be uh, engaging. That's, perfect time to send an email out to somebody, and that engagement will help with your email deliverability. So after you sign up for a, a newsletter, you get that free open right away, basically. Uh, the last one from, from Chewy there, that's a, a repurchase. So there's a, a lot of different ways that you can send a trigger. So a repurchase um, at a certain amount of time after somebody's last purchased, um, whatever example you can think of, it, it's based on generally an action that your customer or your subscriber does. So we'll talk about those, uh, those triggers, and they are some of the most common emails that marketers send. Newsletters are by far the most common, uh, but then that welcome email, that number one, because it, it's the first time somebody interacts with you, you know that they're right there, they've got, generally got their phone in their hand, or in the case of a hotel check-in, they're probably going to be opening up, trying to connect to Wi-Fi and do whatever. So if that email is the first thing they see, they'll probably look at it and, uh, and get that engagement started. Um, sales and promotions, those are more product emails. Those might fit better into the advanced batch of last, where if you have a history of purchases uh, from a particular person, you can personalize your emails to what products they might be interested in or product categories. Um, events, uh, if you have a uh, conference or a webinar or something like that coming up, if somebody has registered for that, then you might want to start sending them different information, uh, a reminder of the link. But if they haven't registered, you would want to remind them to register. Um, so just personalizing that so that the people are receiving the right copy and understanding that you're you're really talking to them and not sending that wrong message. Um, then the post-purchase, again, as a, an order confirmation or some other transactional information, um, order status updates, those are a great way to get people to continue to engage with you. Um, and you can throw a few other links in there if you want to, um, things like buy other products, uh, get upsells. People are going to open, see where their order is, and then they might see something else they like. 
So when you get into um, the segmentation, you can have really basic segments for these triggers. Um, you may want to add some more filters um, to really target individual people, uh, but you can start with data identified equals today. That's a welcome email. Really don't know anything else, and probably at that point you don't know a whole lot more about that customer anyways, so you can't do a whole lot more uh, personalization, but you're still personalizing the timing of that right after somebody is new. Uh, last purchase date is 30 uh, minus 30 days. These date filters are really underused. And the number of customers I've talked to that um, even after they've used Monitor Campaign Studio for a couple of years, uh, I'll show them this for a new campaign they want to run, and they're really surprised and love that they can do that. So uh, that's a great feature that I think is really underused, where you can just say something is X days ago or X days in the future and create a, a campaign based on that. Uh, I will say you have to be careful because if somebody, uh, that last purchase date is the next day and you want to send an email a week later, they will have fallen out of the segment and out of the campaign. Um, some of the other ones, like uh, this is a live customer example from the uh, one of our CDP customers that has loyalty uh, and they have a trigger set up for it. Um, if somebody is close to a annual reward in that loyalty program. Perhaps it's just one single email. This one is an automation campaign. It, it looks a little bit more complex, but it's really not when you look at the steps in this campaign. And what this is, is if you went to ivory.com and signed up for one of our sandboxes, this is the campaign that you would go through. So it just starts with people who fill out a form. You, there's a check for people that may be in Japan because that is completely different language, completely different marketing we send to them. We'll also remove a tag at the end of the campaign. So you see that that is uh, wait eight days because it's a seven day sandbox. At the end of that eighth day, you will have gone through this entire campaign. The rest of it is just one day at a time, send an email, all very basic. So, and that starts with the form submission. So when you're thinking about these basic automations, you think about the segment, think about who the people are that you want to target, think about when you want to get to them, what is it that they're doing, and then what do you want to send to them, and then how do you want to send to them. In this case, it's emails. It could be a welcome text, somebody opts into your text message program, and you want to send that uh, the double opt-in or the welcome maybe some sort of offer right away, 10% off your, your first purchase with this uh, text code. So all that is really you need to consider when you're setting up basic automations, but it's building uh, because both the personal, personalized newsletters or batchalized emails and these basic uh, triggers lead into your full marketing and business operations. Uh, so one of the most important things, like, uh, like I mentioned before, the segments, um, the date filters in particular, are things that customers may not know about or online users may not know about. Um, so it's really important to know what's available to you. Um, know what's available to you on the web, know what's available uh, for emails, for SMS, any of the other channels. Um, but beyond messaging, know what the platform can actually do from an operational standpoint. Um, we have a new customer that has a coupon that they have just sent out emails and said this coupon is good for a year. And they send an expiration date and every year they change it to be the next year. Um, in this case, what we can actually do is use an update contact action, set that expiration date to be in 90 days, and then that expiration date is a much shorter time when somebody can use that coupon and therefore they're not losing more money from people taking advantage of a coupon too late. Um, so you can actually make a little bit more money with that action. Um, when you're thinking about doing your, your full automation, it's not just marketing either. You want to talk to other people in your business, see what's important to them. What can you automate? Um, it could be sales emails. It could be uh, your HR team. When you had new employees coming on, you'd have an onboarding process. Um, or if you've hired new people, particularly in India where there's a, a long time frame before they really start, you can have a pre-boarding campaign. 
uh, get those people engaged with your business before they may decide to take an offer somewhere else. Uh, I know that's been an issue for uh, a lot of companies, um, and we've also benefit, benefited from it as well, so uh, it can work both ways. Um, so talking across all those different uh, departments, and instead of understanding your customer here, but it's really understand your recipient. Who is going to receive that message? And then what is the journey, the entire journey, that you're sending this person on? Once you have that whole journey mapped, then you can start getting into the little pieces. And he Alex did a great job of uh, demonstrating that earlier, where you have your welcome right after somebody signs up, get a little bit of information about coffee. Once they made their first purchase, you want to take them out of the campaign. Uh, this just a welcome. You want to get them into that purchase campaign, the repeat purchase, and any other reviews, anything like that. Um, so it's important when you're building those segments, not just to think about who you want in the campaign or who you want to receive the message, but also who you don't want to receive that message. Um, so again, the American Airlines example, you don't want somebody to receive a message about a canceled flight if they're not supposed to be on that flight. It really doesn't matter. Um, the planning is, is really important to creating automation. Now, the planning is also important to your, your basic newsletters or your personalized emails um, and your basic triggers, but it's especially important when it comes to full automation. Um, having that planning, having a, a data mapping document, you want to understand the information that you have available to you and then how you can use it. Because if you do have a lot of different systems, that are feeding data into Modic, it's, a, it's really easy to mess it up and try to use the same data from a couple different places where it might conflict. Um, and then look at past results. Know what you've done before. Um, and one of my tips on this next slide is to use naming conventions. So if you do have an event campaign or a webinar campaign, know what's worked, know how you get people registered, know how you get people to actually attend um, and that naming convention will make those campaigns a whole lot easier to find in the future. Um, a few things that uh, I pointed out here are just underused or maybe unknown features that Modic has. Um, segmentation and chaining campaigns. So that's part of that um, taking people out of a campaign or out of an audience at the right time. So you can do that. Uh, one of our customers works with colleges and universities. They're trying to get people to uh, first apply and then enroll at a, at, a camp, at a university. So if somebody has already applied, they don't need to send apply information. If somebody's in ninth grade, they're not going to be applying yet anyway, so you want to exclude your ninth graders. Um, forms and sources. This is actually a great example from Acquia. When Acquia started moving from Marketo over to uh, Modic or Campaign Studio, about two years ago, there were uh, close to 500 forms. Um, and using sources, using fields, um, understanding what they wanted to do with all those form submissions for content downloads, uh, webinar views, uh, historic webinar views, any lead gen forms, they actually got that down to about 10. So a significant reduction just in knowing what they wanted the journey to be and how they could use the data coming in, uh, particularly from Drupal. Um, jump to event can save you a whole lot of time. If you have different branches of a campaign and you, when somebody does something on one side, instead of building a whole other branch to do the same thing, if somebody, say, opens an email on the other side, you just say jump to events as uh, I guess somebody showed earlier as well. Um, tags and engagement, we have that tag. I showed the example for the sandbox campaign. Um, engagement for points can be really helpful as well so that you continue to send to um, your most engaged customers. You may want to send uh, smaller discounts to the people who are more likely to purchase from you anyways. Or you may want to offer them larger discounts as a, a thank you or a reward for purchasing. Um, and then channels. So, the presentation earlier, especially about direct mail, um, that's one that is not thought of very often because there isn't a plugin for it. Um, but with the web books, that really gives you a lot of options with where you can send messages through. So 
Um, there's a Twilio plugin that's available that we, uh, we have in Campaign Studio, but if somebody wanted to use a different SMS provider, web hooks are an option. Um, one of our largest customers does use direct mail. I don't even know who they use. They just use uh, web hooks uh, because that's available and, and um, they figured it out. Um, name conventions and categories, again, that's uh, something to keep yourself organized, know what campaigns that you have and what you've done, um, and get your, your people into those right campaigns. Um, and then when you're building your automations, think about them um, and think about how they can help you in the future. Not everything has to be done right away. You will have campaigns today that might be pretty basic, but in two years, three years, four years, you'll probably want to do a lot more and you may be able to collect information now that could help you in the future. Um, so this is the same exact campaign that I showed, the sandbox campaign, but if you think of all those other things you can do, taking people out of the campaign um, at different times, or if you didn't use a, a jump to event, or if you use dynamic content, um, there are ways that you can really simplify similar campaigns um, and not have too many different emails. Um, you can get people out of the campaign. Say somebody has responded and they have a demo set up and their, their lead status in Salesforce has gone to uh, a prospect. So they've got an opportunity open. This content might not be as relevant to them anymore, so we can take them out of the segment, we can take them out of the campaign. Um, so you can get a little bit more advanced with this, adding different channels, uh, knowing where in the customer journey somebody is, or in the, not necessarily customer, but subscriber, employee, whatever it is, and then if somebody does respond, what do you do with that? Um, you don't want to keep sending them a, uh, a bad message, you don't want to keep asking for a review if they already left you a review. Um, and that is all, so one last chance today to work Joey set count up. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? All right. It is dark out, I know the beer is out there, so. <laughs> Thank you.